Hello everybody and welcome to my unboxing, review and setup of two pairs of Auxbeam LED spotlights. So, I've just been sent these very kindly by Auxbeam. They're in the two cardboard boxes behind, but at the moment you obviously can't see anything. So, in this video, for the first part at least, we're going to unbox them. I'm going to explain the specifications of them and show you some in-depth close-ups of each one. And also at the front here we've got a nice baseball cap and a sticker branded in Auxbeam. So very nice that I sent these. Um, I really do appreciate it. And it was it was definitely a nice touch when I opened the parcel up and saw them at the top. So thank you very much to Auxbeam for this. Um, so which one should we go for first? Let's go for the one which is partially open. I did actually open this one just because I wanted to see inside because it was slightly open so I wanted to make sure it wasn't damaged. But to begin with we've got a loom. This is the actual loom which comes with it free of charge I think. And uh, it basically contains a 30 amp fuse in the fuse holder, also a relay, and that is in a, uh, a plug already, which it's all basically done for you. All you have to do is plug it all in and of course connect the positive and negative terminals to your battery on whatever machine it is you're going to use this on. While I'm on the topic of what applications this can be used on, I do believe it can actually be used on anything from forklift to a forestry machine. So anything really as long as you can plug the loom in which you should be able to because it just goes to the 12 volt battery uh, then you should be okay so i'm going to be setting this up later in this video along with the other light as well but i'll get onto that in a minute now for the lights themselves um, they are actually very well protected in here so no chance of them getting damaged in transit i would have thought they'd be identical because they come in pairs uh, but this is the first one, as you can see, six LEDs. It's very strong, robust. Aluminium, I think this is. And it does come with brackets as well. They are in this jiffy bag. Uh, I'll get them out in a minute. So here is another close-up of this one. And they are nine watts each, so 18 watts in total that runs through the loom. And the plug which is already on it, it's already got a nice socket on it and that literally just plugs straight into the loom which is included and it's very easy to install. I'm looking forward to doing this. And again we have got another one here which should be identical, just to open it up to show you. And now you might be wondering about the protection rating which these have been given, for example if it can withstand submersion in water. And the protection rating for these is an IP67, which essentially means that it can withstand a lot of dust being forced at it, and also it can be submerged between 15 centimetres and one metre of water. So just if it gets rained on, that is no problem at all. They're very strong and can withstand quite a bit. So yeah, they've got a very good protection rating. So before we get too much of a mess on here, let's just move stuff out of the way. And actually, as I did actually just say then that you could fit it to the 12 volt battery, but it also does fit to a 24 volt battery, if that is the machine you're using it on. Now in here, this is the bracket, and there should be two of these, if I can get them out. There we go. Um, and they're adjustable, so once they're fitted to the machine, you can adjust the angle, and you get included the bolt, washers, nuts, and also some allen keys. And uh, yeah, that basically should be everything you need to install it onto whatever machine you're using it on. So those are the first lights which I've been sent. Uh, the four inch, 18 watt LED lights. Perfect for what I need it for. Um, and we're now gonna move on to the seven inch LED strobe lights. Uh, so looking forward to this, let's move these out of the way very carefully. And let's bring this box forwards. I did cut the sticky tape which is on here, but it might have uh, restuck. Oh no, there we go. And these ones are actually, although bigger, these are cheaper, but I'm hoping the quality is still gonna be really good. Now, one thing I already did know about is the wiring loom is not included, but I believe you can actually buy this extra. So that would be handy if you're not really if you're not really that good at wiring, I'm not great myself, but I can get by. So we've moved them out of the way now, let's just zoom out a bit so we can see things. Sorry about the backdrop, I've got a new uh, backdrop coming soon. So here we go, this is the 7 inch one. And look at that, that is absolutely fantastic. 
And there's a close-up of that. Hopefully you can see it without reflecting my face too much. I think it is reflecting a bit. Uh, but then on the back of that, we've also got many cooling fins, which will allow this to stay cool. Obviously, because it's LED anyway, they're not going to get too hot. But everything emits a small amount of heat. Uh, but luckily, we've got these fins to cool it down, so it runs really efficiently. I really do like that. They're going to be perfect on the back of the tractor. So that is the first one. And here is the other one. Very similar, in fact exactly the same, uh, but just as good, and you might notice the wiring on this, this has not actually got a socket on it at all. So you can start from scratch, this is just basically the positive and the negative. So you can you can do your, your loom on here yourself. Now what I've done, if this might help you if you're doing this yourself, is I have bought one of these. This is essentially a wiring kit, which includes everything, the fuse, the relay, all the wires you need, and also some terminals as well. So very handy if you don't know which wires to get, because obviously if you get the wrong wires, you can cause some short circuits or too much resistance or whatever. So that is a good thing to get if you are new to wiring or just want to do this yourself. Having said that though, I think Auxbeam do sell a loom for these, so you can, you can buy that extra if you want to. Uh, it just really depends which way you want to do it. It's, I think the whole process is going to be quite simple. In fact, I think the hardest thing is going to be my problem, which is going to be fitting the lights to the front of the tractor, which means manufacturing a bracket. Um, but yes, if you already have somewhere to bolt these onto, it should be dead easy. So what you get for the price is fantastic. Now, this I would have thought would be a bracket. Yep, yeah, it's another adjustable bracket in there. Hopefully you can see that. And more bolts got some split washers in there and also some uh, nuts as well so no chance of them shaking loose get two of those so everything you need to fit it is there except for the wiring of course but you get quite a length here what's that about 40 centimeters I think probably given to you straight away so enough there to play with so if you do mess up then you can just cut a bit off and start again so that is the lights themselves really do like them then we just get the four inch ones up here again there we go. So obviously there is a size difference, but both feel very high quality. In fact, they feel the same. They do feel very similar. It's like the same light, but only a bit smaller. But yeah, definitely loving these. Can't wait to fit these and give them a go. So later in this video, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the tractor where I'm going to fit these two. I haven't totally decided yet exactly, but I have a general idea. And uh, once I've shown you where I'm going to fit them to, I'm going to most likely uh, just show you where I'm going to feed the wires through, where to put them in everything, and then I'll do the rest off screen. And then, once I've fitted everything, I'll run through everything, uh, show you where I've, where I've fitted it all to, how I've run the wires and stuff. And then, I'll wait for it to go dark, which is going to be fairly tricky at this time of year, because it'll be, what, 10 o'clock or something, 9 o'clock, uh, and show you how bright they are in the dark. So, really, really looking forward to this. So the back's going to be easy, just literally drill a hole there and drill a hole there and bolt them on and then just wire, run the wires underneath probably and then to the front in a cable tidy. That's the easy one, the front one is not so easy. The front is slightly trickier because obviously we've got these brackets which have to go in here, actually the right way around is like that. So I've got to weld them in there, or bolt them in there and then weld another bracket off here. And then I want the lights to sit about here. So just to the left and the right of the toolbox. But got to be careful that the wheels don't catch the light when turning and also when, when going over rough terrain, the front axle obviously pivots and don't want it to go too high when turning because then it could also hit the light. So you've got to do a few mathematics here but it shouldn't be too bad in the end. And in fact, in a second, I will have done it all. So see you in one second. Okay, so both the lights are fitted now and it has taken some work only because of the bracket. I had to make the bracket on the front. If it wasn't for that, it would have actually been a very quick and simple job. So these are the front ones, the four inch ones, and you can see they are very bright. Obviously it's daytime, so it's quite hard to see still, 
but I'm going to do some nighttime footage in a minute or two. But yes, you can see that I have positioned them left and right of the toolbox, and I think that looks quite good. In a way, I think it looks like a JCB fast track, uh, but that's just me. Uh, yes, yeah, so they are not going to come off. The brackets are welded on and then bolted onto the chassis. And then the lights are bolted onto the bracket, which I've made, uh, using the nut and the washer, which is included. And there is a close-up shot of it from the side. And there is still enough space around it for the air to go through the cooling fins. So to turn it on, what you do is you literally just press the on button, naturally, and then off again. Now the 7-inch ones, which I fitted to the rear of the tractor, these were actually very easy because I just literally drilled a hole and bolted it through the, the rear plate, which is on the back of the tractor, and they are incredibly bright. And I'll prove that to you in the nighttime footage in a minute. Here's a close-up of the two 7-inch ones bolted to the back. And to switch these ones on, it's just the toggle switch which I got in my wiring loom kit. And for routing, I actually sent the wires down the side of the chassis inside some cable tidies and then I used some cable tidy self-adhesive pads and stuck them onto the side of the chassis. And then I sent all the wires underneath with the other wires in the tractor's loom all the way to the back. Now underneath the bonnet, you might be interested in seeing this, so I'll just take this side panel off and you can see in here we've got all the wires, very tidy actually. It's amazing how unobtrusive they are. And they're then onto the battery terminals there as well. Um, and down here there is the relay for the rear lights. And then under the bonnet in front of the battery, there is actually the relay for the front lights. So they're both relayed and they're in their own loom. I've already been using the rear lights quite a bit and it's actually amazing how efficient the cooling fins make the lights. It keeps them very cool. Um, there is a bit of heat, but it gets rid of it very quickly. As for the wires on the foot mats here, these are going to be actually sorted behind the centre console once I receive a new one, because I've bought another one, and then the switches will be actually inside the console, so it'll be much easier to use. Right, so, it is almost dark, so I'm going to run through the front and the rear lights and show you them in the dark. So, first of all, I'm going to sit on the seat and... Uh, we're going to do the front lights. These are the factory fitted lights to the tractor, so not the ones from Orcs Beam. That is them on low beam, and that is full beam factory headlights. Next, I'm going to do the front 4 inch LEDs from Orcs Beam. I'm going to switch them on here. Immediately, you can see how bright they are. It's not even fully dark yet. And here is a higher up view using the GoPro. And here's a front shot of the lights which are switched on. This is without the factory headlights switched on. And this is with the factory headlights switched on. It doesn't make a huge difference because obviously they're halogen bulbs so not very bright. Next we're going to do the rear 7 inch spotlights. That is them switched on, obviously we're very close to a hedge here so I'm going to have to spin the tractor around and do the same shot looking the other way. That will give you a better idea of how bright these actually are. And there we go, looking the same way, very bright, but please do note actually, these are spotlights, so it's actually aiming the beam into the centre, but still brilliant lights. So what I'm going to do now is put the GoPro on top of the roll bar and then take this for a drive and show you the three different lights we're using, that is including the factory lights, and show you the difference between them all.
And there we have it. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely love these lights. I really do want to thank Orcsbeam for allowing me to do these videos and for sending me the lights in the first place. It really does mean a lot and I'm definitely going to make good use of these lights and I'm sure other people will do as well. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review, unboxing and demonstration of the 4 and 7 inch LED spotlights by Orcsbeam. Until the next video, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.